Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Jesus reminds us to watch for the signs of his return. Today, we will explore further what we are seeing in our times that line up with what signs he said would indicate the potential of the end and his return. We will also discuss the practical meaning of this as we watch and as a remnant prepare as he so leads. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, everybody. This is uh, uh, End Times Friday, and this will be airing on the uh, 19th of April. And we have our special guest, our monthly guest now, uh, Denny Weinberg from uh, Santa Rosa Valley in California. Mm -hmm. and didn't didn't you guys just Denny have a harvest of your av avocados? We did. We just completed it uh, last week. We picked uh, hundred thousand and one wow. pounds of avocado. <laughs> is is that what would be considered a good harvest? A medium? What is that in in realms for those of us who don't know? That's the what best. Kind of, harvest. What kind of year did we have? <laughs> best best harvest. Uh, we've ever had in that's in, amazing in uh, weight in weight of fruit so our trees really did well that's awesome that's great and the uh don't they uh they actually track them from your your uh, ranch right and then they can you can ultimately know kind of where they wind up oh yeah. any chance any come to new hampshire i don't know but you know when you buy an avocado <laughs> a little sticker on it that sticker is basically the um uh the uh, pathway back to its origin within oh, probably awesome. probably 50 trees oh Any wow excellent have you ever uh have you ever <laughs> gone into a <laughs> store and and say hey that's my avocado <laughs> i try and look but you know they ship them all over the place from here yeah it's a big big part of the um the u.s um uh, avocado industry is sourced in the county that i live in mm. yeah yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, how's your uh, how's your water doing out there? Great. You know, we got more rain coming this weekend. It's just the last couple of years after all, you know, five years of doom and gloom because of, you know, drought. The last couple of years have been incredibly wet. The mm -hmm. uh, reservoirs all through California are full. They're actually spilling them over right now because the snow melt will accumulate water later in the year faster than they can drain them. So they actually have to wow. anticipate this, the snow melt and then drain water away down into the ocean we've got oh, so much well uh, we're uh, happy to have you on again we thank you so much for uh, the ability to give us uh, updates on israel and uh, insight mm -hmm. about israel and uh, we're excited last time uh, we had talked about uh, denny had discussed uh, this the understanding of the two-state solution and actually it had been put in place uh, back when and the uh, uh, the the extremist never really accepted it and didn't embrace it and therefore they never had it so um, it's interesting and um, uh, Denny sent me the maps on this so I can put them up for us now you that are listening uh, Denny will describe it to you and then uh, uh, if you have an interest in looking at the maps for sure you can email us and say hey I'd like to get a copy of those and we, we can get them to you but uh, Denny why don't you walk us through kind of a recap of what where we left at laugh time and we can just walk through these maps a little bit and then we can start with the update on Israel sure but I guess first I should say I'm not a, a history expert I didn't even do very well in high school studying <laughs> history. but you know it's it's um it's it's become important and interesting to me as a Jew to think, you know, first of all, be challenged by the world's narrative that, you know, Palestine, 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 free Palestine, mm -hmm. free Palestine. And so, you know, as, as part of going back and looking at it, this question of who was Palestine, who is Palestine, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, the history is very different than 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 what we hear today. Yeah. And so three maps sort of um, go through three important periods of time that established the Middle East as we know it today, both the 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 things that people agree on, the things that that people don't agree on are all embedded in it. Um, the first map that you you um, you know that you'll make available to people talks about the um, the uh, the end of World War One and the Ottoman Empire. We all probably don't remember this. I certainly didn't. But the you know the the big um, nations of that time were the Persian Empire, the Ottoman Empire, mm -hmm. uh, Arabia, um, and 
uh, much of this was settled um, because the Ottoman Empire was taken apart, disassembled uh, at, at the end of um, of the First World War. And, yeah, and, by, and by the way, just to uh, help everybody get a context for that, is that uh, the Ottoman Empire had joined the German uh, and the Italian uh, at what they call the Axis, and <laughs> when they all lost. <laughs> Um, you know, Germany and Italy had impact of that and how they handled that. And then the Ottomans, because they were part of the loss of that, had to, uh, and as part of the surrender, they had to agree to the terms that were set up in the map here that Denny's showing are the terms that because they lost the war, they had to accept it. Yeah. And so the Allies uh, sort of took control in, in sections. There was a French uh, zone, there's a British influence zone. There was a red zone that was sort of temporarily British controlled. And um, what happened during that time, between that time and World War II, is the British just got tired of this sort of temporary holding path. Mm -hmm. And so they, they uh, uh, lateraled this to the United Nations to say, you've got to resolve this. And the second map, that um, Rich has included, which has, it's titled Palestine on the map, but yep. is the result of the work that the UN did and what, what um, to try and create a, a separate and distinct new um, uh, uh, set of, uh, a, new, a new map. Mm -hmm. And interesting there, the, the principle that they used was this principle of self-determination, yep. that the people of, the, of these areas, when they come together, they should have the right to create new states uh, uh, their own way. And it was a really important function. And the second thing, which we still talk about today, was there were two. There was one that was the creation, and they were two states joined economically, but separate. And the, uh, the formation of one was the, um, uh, uh, well, what it says is the formation of uh, autonomous Jewish and Palestinian areas. Yeah. And this map shows what was the Jewish part of this uh, of this uh, territory, and what was the Palestinian part of it? That's really the first time that Palestine didn't the the word Palestine didn't mean the Jewish people or uh, mm -hmm. and others that dwelled there. See, from, from biblical times on, this term Palestine referred to the the children of Israel. Yeah. So once they mm -hmm. once they That's landed in the Promised Land, you know, Canaan and all of that. That this all became this this land. So. This work of the United Nations was intended to create two states, but what ended up happening is one got defined as the Jewish state, the other defined as the Palestinian state. Mm -hmm. What happened going forward is, and we know this just looking today, the Jewish people uh, took this idea of autonomous rule seriously. And the, um, the, the, the others said, we don't really want to have our own state. We just want to be part of the greater, greater Arab nation. And they just languished for years and years and years. Yeah. And by the way, on this map, Denny, um, the, you know, it's the green is the uh, Jewish and the brown is the uh, Arab. Yeah. Um, if you look on the left of the Mediterranean there, that's what's called Gaza. Um, and then what's that big uh, brown section in the middle? What's that called? Well, today, some of that, a big part of that today is the uh, Western, West, West uh, Western Bank. Bank. Okay. the West Bank? Yeah, West but Bank. It's interesting. If you look at the cities that are there, and if, you, if this were broken down by population centers, the, what was left to the Jews in the, it became the, you know, the state of Israel, the Jewish state at the time, was very low population, the most arid, most desertous part of this, <laughs> of this land. All the big cities, all the populations were identified as Arab states. So they had a huge head start to create, uh, you know, a new land for themselves and a new and a new country and a new self-governed country yep. for themselves. Uh, wars since then redefined some of this. Borders were expanded, mm -hmm. contracted, and that is what ends us at, at the uh, point of the um, the creation of this of the state of Israel in your third um, right. Uh, in your third map, yep. Rich, that goes from the creation of Israel through several wars that redefined geographies. And you can still see that West Bank sort of there, but it's gotten compressed a lot. Yep. Mm -hmm. And along the way, you probably remember this not too long ago, Israel took over huge portions beyond this area into Jordan and uh, into Egypt. 
and those and then they um, uh, move back from those boundaries to these sort of historic state boundaries. And that's what we know of as Israel today. Um, yeah. yeah. And when you think of the uh, extremists right now uh, on this map here, uh, you see that little section called Gaza. That's yeah. where Hamas uh, basically headquartered and was using that to uh, attack Israel in various places, which they started with the October 7th war in a big way. That was Gaza. And then on the uh, north side of that, you see Lebanon. That is where Hezbollah is located. Um, yep. And they try to attack it from the north. And then, of course, Iran is, is we don't see that on the map here, but it's um, – a bit ability because of their missiles and things they can attack over over all this <laughs> in into it so you've got north south uh and and uh in this case east of uh, uh extremists that would like to eliminate that uh what's called what looks at blue they want to eliminate the whole thing <clears throat> and it also it also tells you why it was so important for egypt to reach some kind of an agree i mean for israel to reach some kind of an agreement with israel and then over time, agreements of some kind with Jordan, um, because there's such a huge amount of the border of mm -hmm. Israel that right. is related to those two countries, including Gaza. You know, Gaza, um, while it's got a very thin slice of a of a, um, a boundary with Egypt, that is where Rafa is, right at that boundary. And so the vast amount of Gaza population is right at the Egyptian border. Those gates uh, um, and those borders are absolutely closed tight. Yeah. And and it, right. and so so Egypt doesn't allow any um, Arabs in the in in the Gaza Strip to come across that border and find refuge in Egypt, and that's one of the reasons that today this all the controversy worldwide is that that uh, Israel has pushed the residents of Gaza down you know up up against no place to go. It's not because of the ocean; it's because because e Egypt doesn't want them to enter. Right. Right. That's right. Was that? Do you know if the um that was limited prior to October 7th also? Was that pretty tightly controlled it was, at that it was. point? Okay. It was. When I look back on some of these articles that have been written back through back to 2011 and mm -hmm. 2012 and 13 by reporters in the area, it was very clear even back then that there was a Gaza problem. Okay. And it was, you know, it's it obviously we're much more aware of it now because of the intensity of the, the current war. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, that's a, that's a great catch up, uh, highlighting again of... Uh, where we are today. Uh, so uh, particularly uh, if we can describe it, uh, you know, uh, the, the land of, of Israel is is really most of the biblical land that we're given to them on that little sliver um, on the left of Mediterranean, its southern portion is Gaza, which is where Hezbollah is. And, and, and Egypt, you can see that is uh, on the border of that. And, and the interesting thing is, is that um, this whole discussion about refugees uh egypt won't let them in uh, mm -hmm. so they say no and then on the north side is lebanon with hezbollah uh, and so uh we can see denny thank you for taking us through that progression of really how it got to this point um and it's really interesting it all happened by the way uh after world war one uh, yep. so just over 100 years now and um, they became a nation in 47, and they won the Six-Day War in 67. Um, and they function as a country with a conflict of people that would, that would like to eliminate them. So mm -hmm. that's interesting. You know, it's, it's only in the most recent graph of the three that you show that you notice this, that Jerusalem is, co is um, uh, coterminous or, or yep. uh, uh, with the... Uh, with the state of Israel. Yeah. Initially, it was it was an island, and it was designated mm -hmm. in its own way as as uh, you know, sort of jointly governed. And so now the the capital of Israel in in Jerusalem is um, is now at least you can get to Jerusalem from Israel without having to go mm -hmm. across to another country. Right. That's right. An enemy country. Yeah. yeah, that is interesting. So, Denny, uh, thank you for that. And um, you know, based on uh, the, the latest and there's lots going on over there tell us what is happening and uh help explain the situation uh what what they're thinking over there uh where where it might go next and you know just kind of we'll, we'll kind of help help uh, process that and we'd like to you know do that this session and next session as well so go ahead and bring us up to date so what's uh i guess there, if i was going to think of the themes that i get from uh uh 
uh, both what I'm reading and, uh, and in the daily blogs that I that I um, follow with with my my buddies over there. Um, the the world situation has the world opinion has had an impact. That's yeah. probably mm -hmm. the most probably the most important. It um, it's uh, you know you you see there are protests in Israel, big protests in Israel, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a lot and that has been you know amplified uh, by the world opinion. The sho the shocking thing is that the um, we we hear nothing of this over here, but over there the protests are in two you know, with two topics. One, where are our hostages? Mm -hmm. And if this yeah. government can't get our hostages released, we'll get another government that will. Mm -hmm. And the second one is um, about the, the you know, the war itself. Um, but there is as much protest on the war itself that the current government is not being aggressive of a, enough as it is that those that the current government is being is overreaching. That's what that's that's the um, sort of the media and public reaction views over there. Mm -hmm. um, they are really angry at the at, at the two or three um, responses that have come from the US government. I mean, really angry at the United States. The people the people are. How could Schumer have said what he said being a Jew? You know, they just can't get over that. Right. And How can could you recap just for purpose of this conversation what that was that Schumer said? Well, Schumer started it saying that Israel, uh, you know, has, has should should negotiate or, or mm -hmm. should open up a um a uh a ceasefire mm -hmm. so that all these other things can happen release of the hostages and all of that and the fighting will stop and i think his he may have even gone so far as to say a permanent ceasefire but i, I can't remember if that's what he said but the fact that he brought that up when israel was attacked and mm -hmm. you know so so they're angry about that right president has gone back and forth you know you know he's he's ambiguous he's contradictory but they're not happy with that either um what they what i also hear is this is all for us a lot of this is all for us political purposes and when blinken and others are over there the private conversations are all about let you know you're going to do what you're going to do let's figure out how to cover ourselves you know with our own press and with our own political stuff so mm, i don't see, i don't see anything in what i'm reading and hearing that the um that goal number 1 of israel which is to wipe out got um uh hamas so they can't re-infiltrate that that's that's gone uh, what i am reading about is the reality of how long this war is going to go on that um mm. there are quotes in in um israeli press that the defense minister the um uh the the head of the um, unified government um have both made statements that this is probably a couple of years of fighting now wow. probably won't be as it probably won't be as visible um, and because of some of the pullback of of um, resources in central and northern Gaza, that Hamas has already repopulated some of its places, and they're going to have to go in and take them out again. And they blame that a bit on on Biden. Although there is, you know, there's also this idea that they needed to regroup and re, you know, some of their forces. Um, I think there's a they're they're they believe they're well equipped to deal with a war on many fronts. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I see a lot of reporting on what's been going on with people's GPS systems and uh, that, you know, um, they're, and they're certain that, that that GPS systems are being reprogrammed and jammed uh, to deal with more guided missiles that may, you know, come into Israel. And, you know, there are people that have gotten in their car to go somewhere and, you know, in Jerusalem and it's showing them in Beirut. So <laughs> they know that they all know that's what's going on. They have a lot of trust in their in their government. Uh, and their defensive capabilities to deal with this. So they um, there is a belief they can deal with a multi-front war. They're expecting even potentially an attack from directly from Iran. Um, mm. And I guess we'll see. So I don't see anything in, in terms of their determination in the way they're reporting the, mm -hmm. the, um, the sort of the mental health of Israelis. They view this as survival and they continue to view it as survival and there's there's no choice. Um, Let's talk. Let's talk about a couple of things there, Denny. What is uh, the population that is actually encouraging their government uh, to keep going? What What is driving them to want to do that? Because historically, there has been lots of positions on that, but it seems like the populace of Israel is all unified in a sense. Is we want you to press this, and we want this to happen. 
what what is driving them? What happened here, and what's driving them to that position? And then and then we'll talk about come back and talk about the difficulty of why would a war take take longer than we thought? You know, so uh, mm-hmm. answer the first one first, and we'll come to the next one. Yeah, I think this is not a new story for them. Um, one of the articles I'm going to give you is um, uh, is titled "An Insider's Guide to the Most Important Story on Earth," and it's an article that was written about Israel and um, Gaza in 2011. Mm-hmm. And it was an AP reporter that a, 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 a former AP reporter that wrote this. Um, and so I'll I'll get that to you. But what if you read you start reading this and you think it's something that was written a couple of weeks ago? Because hmm. the time, the pressure, the the tension between Gaza and Israel was, as, and there was some, you know, skirmishes, you know, sit between, uh, you know, 15 years ago and today that have occurred. There've been incursions, there've been small things that, you know, and flare-ups. So I think the Israeli people don't view this as anything new, and that's why they're they're dug in. They're used to that. This is going to be a fight until the end, sooner or later, and and that that's one thing we don't fully appreciate. I think the 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 nature of how brutal and horrible the attack was and how surprised they were emboldened them. But they were already they already were already there. Um, so I think that so I think that's that's the that's the main thing. They they just view this as something that has to be dealt with, has always had to be dealt with, and now because they were attacked in the way they were attacked, they now have, you know. They believe this is not an overreaction. They believe this is was you know sort of this was going to be destiny sooner or later. Yeah, and so their their thought is that we'd like to, um, let's say, eliminate this threat that's always been there, um, and because of what they did, they're they're they want to all go after that. And and their their desire would be that there just isn't any more threat coming from that Hamas and and from Gaza. Um, but they're finding out that it's not that easy, right? <laughs> it's not that easy. You know, they um, they have taken out two thirds of the tunnels, which were m- more widespread than they knew. Mm. But they also had been tracking some of these tunnels. I saw a video the other day of two very, very large tunnels being blown up. They, they filmed it mm. and they said they've known about these tunnels and these tunnels were um, uh, for for uh, 10 years. And these tunnels, they've all, and they've already put sensing equipment in these tunnels they put explosives hidden whenever they wanted to do it they could blow them up but they've tracked huge amounts of intelligence in some of these tunnels but beyond that it's so much more widespread and the, the tun- other the tunnels thing, they- the tunnels were all underneath the cities yeah and they're way down underneath the cities wow. and they can cities to cities they go over borders they go deep into uh, and, and they it's not just down in the southern border they see tunnels like this up into lebanon too ah. and so wow. they know this tunneling thing uh, has been, you know, for many, many years, a huge, um, you know, project of construction because they're they're big. You can walk through them. They're lit. You've seen some of these pictures. They have they have uh, bathrooms in them. They have meeting rooms. They, you know, and and many of them have their headquarters or, or their exit and entrances under hospitals and mm-hmm. schools. Not just the one that we've seen all the news on, but many. And so they they again, they knew that ultimately the war would have to be fought the way it's going to be fought. There's going to be worldwide controversy about, um, eva- you know, uh, destroying hospitals as they did this, because that's how they that's how they um, that's how they have prepared for the fight. Yeah. yeah. And what uh, what is causing uh, the let's say the difficulty in trying to f- finish it? Uh, and get it resolved. And I, I'm looking from Israel's side of it is, hey, we're going to go until we get it finished. What, what, why is that difficult? And what are they, what are they facing? I think if it weren't for the world reaction a couple of weeks ago, they would have already attacked Rafa. They were prepared to do it. They have a really good process of taking these tunnels out. They've lost very few people in these tunnels. They use robots. They use gas. They use water. You know, um, they, uh, you know, provide lots and lots of, of of advanced warning for people to get out. Uh, so I think it would have already happened. I think the world, not just the world opinion, but I think the United States has probably said, mm. if we're not, if we don't sign off on your attack in Rafa and how you're going to deal with the large populations, um, we're cutting off aid or we're cutting off weapons or ammunitions, whatever. And I think they depend so much on the United States resupplying them that it became you know, battle strategic. And so, again, what I hear is 
that the United States knows they're going to attack Rafa and has and has not told them not to. They just want cover. And hmm. that's happening now. You know, I got I I saw something about 50,000 tents are have just moved into um you know, control uh, areas in in Gaza that the Israel controls to be able to start resettling uh, people that want to come north. Um, there's lots and lots of people that are because they've pulled out uh, some of their troops that are already moving out of southern Gaza. So, mm -hmm. in a way, Gaza, uh, you know, Rafa and that area in the very, very in the very deep south, where probably all the all the um, um, hostages are that are left, and all the remaining. Um, uh, leaders of Hamas, and there's not a lot. You know, they've they've destroyed, they've killed most of the leaders of of Hamas, but the few that are left are there, and so I think that the the population will be allowed in uh, you know in some organized way to move, and then I think the attack will happen. Yeah, that's what they that's what I hear is that they, they there's nothing that's holding that up other than probably the United States has said you've got it. We have to sign off in yeah. some way. Yeah, yeah. So we'll. Uh... Uh, when we come back next week, uh, Denny's going to continue. We'll we'll talk about Rafa a little bit. Uh, talk a little bit. You made a statement that we want to explore a little bit about the hostages. Uh, they want the hostages back, and we're, we'll talk a little bit about you know what's the state of that and what's the probability of that. Um, and then uh, we do want to look at because you also made a statement that Hezbollah and Iran. <laughs> Uh, are thinking of uh, you know joining some uh, some aspects of it you know what are you hearing from that so we got we got some great things we need to talk about so um, it's interesting to and kind of see it live happening is that you know, even gosh I think now what three or four or five weeks ago we said Rafa is going to happen but because of the dynamics of it it still hasn't so um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that and the neat thing is we can listen to Denny give us this input and then we'll see <laughs> we'll see how it plays out. And then mm -hmm. Denny will react to it. So Heavenly Father, we're just grateful uh, for Denny and his ability to uh, have this information coming from uh, inside. And uh, we just pray that we'll understand it. Uh, we know that ultimately the world does turn against Israel, but, but you protect Israel. And so we just pray that uh, you help us understand the timing of it and the aspect of it and, and how we are to pray for it. And we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us, Denny. Just a pleasure to have you and your insight on all of this. I know our, our listeners really appreciate it as well. So if you have questions, send them in to us at questions at abideministries.com. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. We'll see you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.